Chet, we are following our earnings season. It really is kicking off in mass today with all of these financial firms coming up, all with strong numbers. Uh, the banks are doing just fine, thank you. But now concern about regulation, particularly with Wells Fargo, a separate incident there, uh, which could weigh on this. Uh, there's also concern about, you know, little things like maybe going to war this weekend with Syria. There's so much we don't know, this much we do. The markets are, well, confused right now, uh, down about 44 on the Dow. What to make of all of this and the cross currents going into the weekend? Market watchers John Lonsky, Gary Kalpam, last but not least in my book, Jerry Willis. Jerry, the markets really can't get a, get a hold of this, can they? Oh, my goodness. So uh, every day is different, and you don't know what's going to move the markets next, right? And I tend to be glass half full, so I look at those earnings. I look at the positives in the economy, and I think, this is great. We're going up from here. But you also have to think about what might go wrong, right? The Federal Reserve policymakers just last week, their notes uh, put out, and they say, hey, we think things are going to the sky, which means – the big negative could be they overreact and start uh, raising rates more than they should, and that could hurt the economy. That's just one thing out there. Net-net, still a strong week unless everything falls out of bed. What do you think? Uh, I'll take the half empty for this second. <laughs> uh, today we hear supposedly some people in Russia talking about uh, going after Boeing and not exporting titanium, so Boeing stock gets hit. Then you got the Syria thing. You just don't know what's next. And then Trump with his tweets. And the last thing is, look, I'm a big believer. It's not the news. It's how the market reacts to the news. I'd like to know why J.P. Morgan, PNC, and Wells Fargo were smacked down today on a couple of them having pretty good earnings. That's something to watch closely in earnings season. I do not want to see bad reaction to earnings that are supposedly good but expected. You know, I could see, John, the concern about Wells Fargo because I believe even in their statement they telegraphed, we don't know what will be meted out, you know, in the part of punishment and all of that. But that's a Wells Fargo sole development, I would think. But then it carried or the, the, the whole financial sector with it that had been up initially on these better than expected numbers and then down. Well, you had Jamie Dimon reportedly come out and state that the banking industry now is very competitive. And moreover, uh, J.P. Diamond, Morgan, J.C. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dimon added uh, that loan lending activity has been flat. And indeed, commercial and industrial loans, business loans, are up by roughly 1% from a year ago. And if you're not getting rapid lending growth, then in all likelihood, the Fed is overestimating the underlying health of the U.S. economy. And the Fed is also overestimating inflation risk. So I could flip that around there to your earlier point and say, well, what am I worried about? Multiple rate hikes in this environment. That might not happen. But isn't it the Federal Reserve that always gets this wrong? I mean, that, that always. is. Always. It's, <laughs> it's what they love to do. They get really excited. They start raising rates. And before you know it, unemployment is jumping higher. Uh, they're, they're quashing uh, what should be an extended and prolonged, uh, prolonged expansion. So that's one of the things I worry about. Another data point we got this week, which I thought was really interesting, China inflation going down. And so this is interesting because it could signal that that economy is slowing. So our big bet has been that the global economy is going great guns. Everything's wonderful. Nothing hurts. Well, maybe not. Yeah, what do you think? I want to add something to that. Uh, the 10-year government bond yield for China has dropped from nearly 3.9 percent at the start of the year to a recent 3.7 percent. Meanwhile, of course, it's gone higher from the, for the U.S. from 2.4 to about 2. Well, what's happening there? Because the two-year is the highest since 2008, right? So the two-year and the 10-year are getting a lot closer to each other. Normally that presages a slowdown or worse, right? Correct. And if you look at some of these long-term earnings forecasts, they have uh, profits slowing substantially uh, from 2018 to 2019. They're still going to grow by 10 percent, but that's down from the nearly 20 percent they see for the United States in 2018. And moreover, revenue growth is expected to slow, and that is at odds with any forecast calling for a 3.25, 3.5 percent 10-year Treasury yield in 2019. And that's an important, Ain't happen. important point point because everybody's been talking about earnings going to be strong. The market has to go up. That's past earnings. The market uh, looks forward. But not didn't backwards. we factor in tax cuts and people couldn't get a good handle on them? This is the first quarter that would be representative of those tax cuts and that that would lift yeah, everybody. And it, and it might be a 16, 18 percent quarter as a result. Uh, uh, well, I think we're going to get a 16 to 18 percent quarter. And that's not good but, enough? But, but you, you know, this is what makes now. you guys seem so shallow and self -care. Peak earnings, <laughs> P-E-A-K earnings, that's what uh, hurts markets. And if the markets start to feel that as earnings come out and guidance comes but out, disappointed in 16 down. to 18 percent year-over-year growth, but that's I'm pretty saying, good. But, but that's already in, baked in the cake. Markets, when they see something already right. done, uh, buy on the they, rumors, they, sell on the facts. They yeah. look 
forward, and that, that has to be watched. And as far as the Fed, look, they, they are reactive. If they see slower numbers, they will stop raising rates as quick as you can say, boo. And if numbers start coming down, uh, they'll lower rates if need okay. be. And as far as China, it doesn't matter what happens from there. They'll still say they grew at 7% GDP. Let's just say one okay. positive thing here, one positive thing here, Facebook. You think that company's in a world of trouble, nah. right? They're doing terribly, awful. People are closing their Facebook accounts. No. Their revenue is going higher. Now, I know the company said it today, but there are outside sources now saying week to week re uh, gains from advertising 7%, 14%. They're doing great. You know, um, the shifts in the market and everything else, uh, and, and do you guys pay attention to outside aberrant developments? This could change. I'm not talking the Comey book, I'm talking um, the political one and, and the, the, the consensus of this blue wave. Because couldn't a blue wave, regardless how you feel politically, undo a lot of the things the markets like, the tax cuts that Nancy Pelosi wants to revisit, and a lot of other stuff. The blue wave could tell the market that the average American wants more regulation, wants higher taxes, uh, wants to punish the high achievers in this economy, and that would very much be a negative for the marketplace. Is that what you would interpret that blue wave to mean? I think that that's one way of looking at it. I, correct. I, 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 you know, I'd be careful at this point in time, but it is indeed very possible. In many, many ways, we've gotten wrong. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, the, the, they, they don't pan out to we're be a long, well. Look, look at it. the market did well under o Obama. You're it's absolutely right. a long absolutely. way away, but the punishment's going to be that the Republicans decided to raise government spending, deficits into a trillion dollars, and I know for a fact that a lot of Republicans, uh, politicians have been getting a ton of phone calls from constituents. What the heck was that? So I think there's, there's a possible penalty right there. And as far as the Democrats, if they win, they have already said they are going to put in legislation to roll back the tax cuts, which I believe have worked pretty darn well. On top of that, you can bet your bottom dollar they are going to go drive to the hoop on Donald Trump with what impeachment, you name it, there's going to be investigation upon investigation. And I promise you, markets are going to be ha have to watch that on a daily basis. It's going to be a big pain in the rear. But what about, so, $21 trillion in federal debt, right? And, uh, and the president wants to make the tax cuts permanent, right? So where is anybody with any sense of fiscal discipline whatsoever? That's I, gone. I think, Not in I Washington. think that's a problem for the markets, for the economy generally. And it's only it's going to take a fiscal crisis to bring back fiscal discipline. It may take a steep jump by the 10-year uh, Treasury yield uh, that cripples the economy uh, to put Washington at work bringing down this deficit. And we're going to send them $3.5 trillion this year federally, over $6 trillion with local and state, and they're still telling us it's not enough. In the coming year, the first $400 billion of our tax dollars is going into the toilet to interest on all the debt. In a few years, it's going to be $700 billion. You cannot continue that trajectory forever without it's something like happening. It's like the Kardashians something are running the federal government, you know, like spend whatever you want to spend any time right you want it. Right? <laughs> I would never have imagined that analogy, but I, I understand what you're <laughs> I don't know